boys and girls, welcome back to a special Christmas Sunday School. Got a set of few lovely Christmas carols for children, and then we're going to look at the New Testament, what it says about Christmas and Christ Jesus coming into the world. Let's sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. <laughs> Our silent night, holy night. Let's pray as we look at our verse again. Special Christmas, special verse. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and love. Well, thank you for another Sunday. We can just take a moment for Sunday school to sing these lovely carols and to think about the lovely Lord Jesus. Lord, you're just a wonderful God, and we we'll thank you for fulfilling your promise of sending Jesus into the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Read it with me. Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone ever asks you, why is the Jesus come into the world? Tell them to save sinners. If they ever ask you, where did Jesus come to? Tell them he came into the world. If they ever ask you, who came into the world to save sinners? You tell them Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's it in a nutshell. Why Jesus Christ came into the world. Put your name here. Christ Jesus came into the world to save Colin. Very humbling to think he loved me that much. He went all the way to die on the cross for me. Put your name in. 
Christ Jesus came into the world to save Colin, or whatever your name is. I was born a sinner, I am a sinner, and Christ saved me. Whenever I call upon his name, my favorite verse, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I was a sinner, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save me. And he did the moment I asked him. Have you ever asked him to save you, to forgive you, to come into your life and your heart, take away all your sin and change you? The moment you ask him, he forgives you, he saves you. Your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. No hesitation because God knows your heart and your motive. So don't spend your whole life asking the Lord into your heart every day and every night making sure. He gives you a promise, I will never leave you. In Hebrews, it reminds us again, when you call upon his name, he forgives you, he saves you. You don't need to keep asking him to do that. Use your energy to pray for others and to pray that God will use you and bless you and you'll spend your life running and living for the Lord Jesus. Let's look at this again. The promise of Jesus, the promise of Christ coming, the promise of the Messiah and what the Bible reveals or teaches us. Last week we looked at the Old Testament all those years of God promising and continue to promise will come to the end of the New Testament in the Bible. And now we have from silence to salvation. 400 years of silence, of waiting, of questions. Will God remember to send his love down? Will he ever speak again? Will he come to rescue us from our sin? Then we have open up the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John deals with the promise of God sending his son, the Messiah, Jesus, into the world. Born in a simple little stable. Let's look at this uh, lovely story. There's a verse why Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The, one of the first characters we come across is a man called Zachariah. Very old man, married to Elizabeth. One day an angel came and said to Zachariah, do you know you're going to have a son? By this time next year, you and your wife Elizabeth will have a son. He says, I don't think, I think you've got the wrong person because my wife and I are very, very old and we're too old to have any children. I don't believe you. And the angel said, because you don't believe me, you're going to be struck dumb. Here's a question. When you're dumb, what's wrong with your ears? See, anything wrong with your ears. When you're blind, you can't see. When you're deaf, you can't hear. When you're dumb, you can't speak. He was dumb. He couldn't talk for a long time. In the meantime, an angel visits Gabriel. Uh, angel Gabriel visits Mary. This is after Elizabeth is expecting her baby. Mary was afraid. And the angel said, Fear not. Blessed are you among women. Not above. Some people think Mary's more important than other people. Almost puts her in a pedestal or level of Jesus. No, no, no. Mary talked about Jesus being the saviour of the world. She was just a normal girl who loved God with all her heart. Who God chose to bring his son Jesus into the world. Why was this here? And she shall bring forth a son. And I shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Again the scriptures teach us why Jesus came into the world. To save his people from their sins. And Mary, the Bible says, she pondered these things in her heart. It's good to ponder. I love that word, ponder. It's meditating. It's thinking upon God when he speaks to you. It's good to spend that time alone just thinking about God, what he's been teaching you, what he's been telling you. She pondered these things in her heart. God has chosen me to bring Jesus into the world. And children, we can be like Mary today. I don't mean to physically bring a baby into the world. I mean we can bring the message of Christ Jesus in the world by telling others, living our lives before others and the message of Christ speaks through. The best sermon ever preached was a, is a life lived before God. Before other people said there's something about that person, that person walks with and Jesus lives within that very person. We've got two girls now, Mary and Elizabeth, they're both gonna have a baby, both supernaturally, both unnaturally, supernaturally because Mary has never been with a man before. She never had a physical experience with a man before, making it impossible to have a baby. But the Holy Ghost has come upon Mary and the baby growing in her womb is the baby Lord Jesus. 
And then older than us here is Elizabeth, and the baby growing within her womb is we, John. Whenever Mary came, the Bible says the wee baby Jesus, and John, whenever Mary came closer, it leapt in the womb of Elizabeth. The excitement and the joy and the thrill of being so close to Jesus. And we can enjoy that experience today when we become a Christian, a child of God. Christ Jesus comes and lives up within our hearts and our lives and fills us with joy to live for the Lord Jesus. You can imagine the excitement both these girls have to share about being potential mothers. Then, of course, John and Zachariah hasn't spoken. And they said his, his name is going to be called John. And all the people said, call him after his father, Zachariah. But Zachariah couldn't speak. He was dumb. He wrote, his name shall be called John. He was to become John the Baptist. The little baby, the people came to visit him. And of course, whenever John grew up, he was the one to announce, Behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away or takes away the sin of the world. Announcing why Jesus Christ had come into the world. And then you've got Mary. And goes back to Joseph and says, Joseph, guess what? I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby. And boys and girls, you can imagine how startled, how startled uh, Joseph was. He was a carpenter. Suddenly, Mary had been with her cousin now for some time. Where had she been? Who she been with? He began to doubt her and wonder. And at night time, he couldn't sleep. And he thought, tomorrow we're engaged. I'm going to stop the engagement. I'm going to ask Mary to leave. But you know something? An angel came and said, Joseph, what Mary's told you is true. She is going to have a baby. And that baby is going to be called Jesus. God has chosen Mary to bring the Christ child into the world. Therefore, continue to love her, be engaged to her, plan your marriage together and protect and look after the baby Jesus. And Mary said, Joseph said to Mary, Mary, we've got to go to Bethlehem. It's 85 miles. It's a long, long journey. It's a really long journey. I wonder if it's too long. But they had to go to pay their taxes for their census to be counted. And when they got to the thought, it was a long, long journey. And I wonder when, when we get there, we're going to get a bath and maybe have a hot meal and a nice soft bed. They were going to be shocked. It wasn't like that. I wonder if you ever ridden a little donkey. I wonder how they travel. They never travel by airplane or helicopter or car or tractor or bicycle. Those things weren't invented. But I would imagine for such a journey and joke, Mary might have a baby, they would have either owned or borrowed a little donkey to make that long journey. Have you ever ridden a donkey before? Here's my experience of trying to ride a donkey. <laughs> surprised every door they knocked sorry there's no room we're full up there's no room no room in the end that's like today today you know most people most people don't have room for Jesus they have no room in their lives because they're so busy so many things going on and then there's no room in their homes too much happening and no room in their hearts you see when you make room in your heart for the Lord Jesus Christ you'll make room in your home and you make room in your life. That's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Children, don't wait till you're a teenager. Life gets complicated, it gets busy. Whenever you get older, your life starts to change, and so many things, you'll end up putting God to the back burner of your life, and eventually thoughts of following God will disappear. Seek ye early, the Bible says, and you will find me. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Put your trust in him. Love him. Do you see that night? Something happened. 
Something happened because the innkeeper said there's no room here. If you go round the back, you'll find a stable with the animals. Move the animals to the side and get some fresh straw and you'll get a wee sleep. I've slept in saw and straw. We used to help deliver pigs and that's a bit like a stable. And I thought, wow, I wasn't born here. I was born in a hospital. But baby Jesus, the son of the living God, God the son, was born in a little stable. Do you want to know what happened? We're going to tell that story next week on Christmas Day when Jesus came into the world. We'll come to that next week, but in the meantime, let's sing the lovely song, O Holy Night. Don't forget to sing along. Christmasy theme as well. That's all for today. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for Sunday School. This is a very exciting story. The whole build up to Christ Jesus coming into the world and why you came into the world to free us, to redeem us, to save us from all our sin. Bless all the children and families we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget next week to see what happens. See you then. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.